Hi class, let's talk obedience and Stanley Milgram. So we just took a look at Solomon Ash and conformity. Conformity is um, where you go along with what other people are doing because you feel internal pressure to do so, not because um, anybody is telling you to do something. Here, we're going to up the stakes. Now, instead of imagining yourself in a room with five other people comparing lines and other people are giving the wrong answer and are you gonna give the wrong answer too? Now you're in a room um, and you're a teacher and uh, the learner is in a different room with you from you and they are strapped into a machine that's gonna give them electric shocks when they give the wrong answer. Lo and behold, they give a lot of wrong answers and you are required to give them more and more shocks. The learner starts to scream and eventually goes silent. You don't want to continue, but somebody with a lab coat on says you must continue. What would you do? I'll bet most of you are thinking, heck no, I'm not going to do that. That violates my moral code. Well, I'm here to tell you about two thirds of you probably would do it. Uh, this is Stanley Milgram. Um, you guys just uh, watched um, the video or you will watch it in a second. Um, after this one with some original footage where Milgram talks about his experiment. Um, he was interested in obedience and he was interested in this because of what had happened in Nazi Germany. Why were people so willing um, to violate the rights of others and kill other people just because they were told to? So he sets up um, a situation and asks the question, could a person be pressured by others into committing an immoral act? some action that violated his conscience, such as hurting a stranger. So here he is with his shock generator, which was a very impressive looking device at the time, although it didn't actually produce any shocks. And his basic study procedure was that he recruited people from a newspaper ad, um, people from all walks of life into a study on learning. And there was a teacher and a learner, and the learner was always a confederate. <clears throat> the learner was always in on it. The teacher um, was, uh, was the actual participant. So um, the teacher watches the learner being strapped into a chair. The learner expresses concern over his heart condition. The teacher goes into a room, different room with the experimenter, and there is the shock generator panel, ranging from 15 to 450 volts, slight shock to XXX. The teacher is supposed to give higher shocks for every mistake the learner makes. The learner does protest more and more as the shock increases, finally screams, and finally goes silent. The experimenter demands obedience, not demands, requests obedience, even if the teacher balks. The experiment requires that you continue or you have no other choice, you must continue. Note that um, the teacher obeys the experimenter even though um, there, there's really no consequence for disobeying. And the experimenter doesn't really have authority um, to make, you, make the teacher do anything, um, but they obey. And that's a good question as to why. So um, Milgram asked psychiatrists, college students, and middle-class adults to make predictions before he did a study. And everybody said that all people would refuse to obey at some point, all people. They also said most people would refuse at 150 volts where the learner first protests, and they predicted that only a few rare individuals would go as far as the 300 volt level. Okay, let's see what happened. They said no one would go the full, full 450 volts. They were wrong. They were very, very wrong. Two thirds of Milgram's subjects, um, 26 of the 40 in the original experiment, and please note that this has been replicated many, many times, were fully compliant to the full 450 volt level. Of those who defied the experimenter, no one stopped before 300 volts, which was almost to the point of extreme intensity shock. Um, you may be thinking that maybe men or women would be different. Maybe women would be more tender hearted. Not true. There were no gender differences. This has been replicated time after time after time two-thirds of people um, in any of the replications um, are fully compliant. Um, so I, I want to point out a couple things here before we conclude on Milgram and I let you watch a little original footage. Um, number one, and you should take notes on this, number one, um, in some of the replications you can see a softening of the effect. So take this experiment, rather than being in a laboratory with a guy in a lab coat at a research university, put it in a strip mall with a businessman as the experimenter, and you get less compliance. 
that's very, very interesting. Um, so what that suggests is that there's something about the situation that is pressuring the compliance. Um, whoever is the experimenter, this person doesn't have actual um, authority over um, the teacher at all, right? I mean, it's just some laboratory guy, just a researcher. Um, but he's wearing a lab coat and he's doing this name of science. And so that lends him an air of authority that a businessman doesn't have. So I want you to keep that in the back of your mind when you're thinking about um, our next uh, topic, which is the Stanford Prison Experiment, where a situation is so powerful that it encourages people again to violate their conscience and do terrible things to other people. Um, there is something about people's roles in a social situation that seems to demand certain behavior. So the role of the experimenter in a research lab, in a lab coat, demands a certain kind of obedience, whereas a businessman in a strip mall doesn't require quite as much obedience from us. There's something very powerful about situational influences and about somebody saying, you must continue, okay? So um, I know it's very, very tempting to say, I would never be the one who would hurt another person if someone told me to. But I want you to appreciate that that kind of thinking is actually sort of dangerous. If you don't realize how dangerous you could potentially be given the right circumstances and a powerful situation, you're kidding yourself. And you're actually a danger to other people when you don't realize what you could potentially do.